So just because I am so new to having a camera on, you're probably going to see my eyes flick around, and I apologize for that. This is going to take a heck of a long time to get used to this, so please forgive me for whatever snafu disaster is about to unfold here, but I, I'm just going to get into it, I guess. So I kind of wanted to play a game in this video with everyone, which is like where people like guess what I'm going to be putting here in the comments like what tier do you think that I have certain jobs at before you even see the video it's like if you want to play do it I think it'd be fun I'm actually just genuinely curious what everyone has to say in the comments I'm just like what do people think I want to play so I'm making this now this video now that we've actually had the actual kits for a little bit of not time now I've had, I've been able to like go over the list, understand like what the rotations would be, like what kind of utility are they bringing, what would the party compositions be, of just all the various jobs of Final Fantasy XIV. And um, I want to say one thing, is like aesthetics are nice, aesthetics are actually really important, but for me personally, I need to know what I'm actually playing as and what like my day in, day out, like minute to minute gameplay is actually going to look like. If I'm not going to enjoy it, it can look as nice as it wants. And so now that I have an idea of what I'm actually doing, I am just going to do this video and I guess it's going to also indicate the order in which I'm going to be leveling jobs into Endwalker. I this will take such a long time to get used to you guys know. Rush it like this. Rush it like this. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> so the order that we are actually going to be going through this is going to be tanks, healers, melee DPS, physical range, and then ending on magical range DPS. Let's get that axe in there. Let's get that axe in there. <laughs> so I, um, before people are just like, you hate the board. I was playing war action Savage Raids back in Stormblood, and I like big meaty axes. So I'm going to put this down because this is actually freaking <laughs> And so for Warrior, it has perks. It has tons of perks. In fact, when I'm healing on Solar and I'm just like, not wanting to <laughs> heal. I just let Eos do it and then I let the warrior really kind of take over and they just have a ton of sustain. And in Endwalker that is like going uh, Nascent Flash. Um, not the biggest fan of the Nascent Flash changes, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I don't know. I think that it is good because there are some times when I would like look at myself and I'd be like, did you really hit Nascent Flash and now you're just doing your basic 1-2-3 combo, which is going to be super unimpressive potency, but when you like paired it up with Valkleaf or whatever abilities, it was actually insanely, insanely strong, which was super good. I'm also not 100% sure how it will feel, and so this is where it's kind of like I need to get into Endwalker and actually like try out the warrior, because it's just like you have the Primal Rend, you have the three Valkleaves, it could potentially feel amazing. I might be like, Whoa, this goes way up my tier list, but right now, um, I I will need to see how it feels. But right now, I'm kind of thinking just with my general approach to tanking, just that I've done so much of it, just that I've played the warrior into the ground and back. I love it. I think that there's many good things, but is it for me? Not necessarily. Do I think it's going to be a bad tank? Hell no. I think that's going to be very powerful. I think that it's going to be a strong contender in Endwalker. Absolutely for sure. And so this gets us into the big D, the Dark Knight. <laughs> and... <laughs> uh, I want to say it. Dark Knight is powerful. It is actually probably when we're talking about like progression rating, the favorite tank of mine in the game. Just because the Blackest Knight is amazing. It is amazing utility. It is something that can save a party member, even if it's not the Dark Knight. Like cast on like a ranged DPS or a healer that is in jeopardy. It is a game changer. I love it. Ooh. But kind of similar to the warrior i feel like i've hit fatigue with the playstyle person like it's still going to be strong i think that a lot of people are still maybe not fully convinced with its power going into endwalker but it's currently strong it's still going to be strong and so i'm actually looking forward to see what it's going to do in endwalker and now this gets us into gunbreaker um the smile across my face mm, i hate the camera because <laughs> it gives away everything i i love the gunbreaker <laughs> So, the quality of life improvements to Gnashing Fang combo with the Bun Bloat, oh my god, the two Aurora, the, the seeing the heart of a conundrum, a corundrum, 
keep not gonna correct me if the comments for my enunciation there. But um, j just a sustain, all of its kit. I I love the Gunbreakers kit, tanking through savage raids in the first tier of this expansion. It was so freaking good. Um, really for me, if I'm placing it anywhere, I'm like looking at. It. Yeah, like I'm looking at like an easy S rank for it right now. More than Paladin. Slightly less than Paladin, but I'm still gonna absolutely put it in the S. So now this brings us to the healers, and I know a lot of people are looking for my thoughts on this, which makes me so nervous, but I will try. So, really, first up is gonna be the White Mage, and I see the White Mage is interesting because all heroes are getting that 1.5 second of uh, the global cooldown leave. White Mage is also going to be getting Water Veil and that's going to be 15% on demand damage reduction. Um, that is going to be for the record like, uh, how to say it, I've been thinking and this is a video I haven't done yet because I need to think more on it but I'm almost feeling like with Divine Medicine 2 charges and then Aqua Veil with mitigation I might think that white mages can deal with tank busters um in spades um not to mention oh my god Lily Bell that is literally such a bizarrely bizarrely strong ability like I cannot emphasize that that is an outrageously busted cooldown three minutes long long like would i want to see it to two minutes absolutely absolutely i think that that would be fair because we look at Ma astro with the macrocosm of stability and i think that it'd be fair i don't think macrocosmos is that much weaker than lily bell in fact i'm thinking it might be a little stronger in some cases actually if i'm super honest so but with white mage getting to the point am i the biggest fan <laughs> Like, of the healers, I I think it is probably my lowest, if I'm super honest, just because it's not my playstyle. White Mage has never really been my thing. I can play it, I can do amazing things with it, but it is not really my thing. So I'm gonna put it in A, it's a solid A, I will absolutely play it, but is it like my first healer? <laughs> if comments have this as anything lower than S, I would be shocked. It's a scholar. Guess. If you guess S, eh, then you'd be right. Because for me, for me, it has always had a fun healing kit. My issues really with the scholar lie in its DPS kit. I just wish that it had a DPS kit that was a little bit more engaging because yes, when you are in a more difficult fight, like do I want to be thinking about all this and that and that and that and managing like nine different dots when I'm in like a savage raid like Dragon's Home War coming up? Who? <sighs> That is like one of my biggest fears, um, and I'm noticing my eyes are turning. So guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still getting used to this, but um, I think that this DPS thing, the Broil spam, is going to become a lot more palpable come Endwalker, and I really say that just because, almost explicitly because of the like GCD weave. I think that that's going to up mobility pockets i think that's going to open up a lot more weaving because right now you need to do rune 2 which always feels a little bad at least for me to press i'm just like oh i just had to press rune 2 i know that my dps is so that never feels that amazing but um i like additions to the kit like i'm looking at protraction that is going to be brilliant that is actually going to be incredibly good uh deployment tactics is another great one and expedient will be hilarious i know a lot of people are sleeping on it but you know what like almost all the mechanics in 14 are movement based or they're resolved through movement based like i'm thinking about like not terminal relativity don't like i'm thinking about like advanced relativity or other ones i guess basic relativity was probably the hardest one and caused the most grief in Prague, but um Really, most of them are movement. Lions would be a better one. Um, e12, e11s uh, electric cycles would be another great one where it was just like everyone needs to like split off into like their different things into um, what do you call it? their different clock spots and get out and again like weave in. The one person needs to go between the tanks. The tanks need to position. That's all movement based. Expedient is making sure that that goes over a little smoother. And people can be like, oh blah blah blah, but sprint. Expedient lasts 20 seconds. Sprint in combat lasts 10. And Remember, they're additive. It's just like, you can now use Sprint at a different time, and I, I just see it smoothing things out. I think a lot of people are sleeping on Expedient. I, the Scholar, it's going to be like either the first or second thing I level, guaranteed. 
asked. Can I turn off my camera for this? Because this is not going to go over well. I'm about to lie. Oh boy, I'm, I'm actually scared that this is going to be like the part that gets the dislikes. But please realize that this is just an opinion based video guys. So Nocturnal Ass was removed and so Ass is now just its diurnal or quote unquote pure healer form. I loved Nocturnal Ast. I really did love it. I mean, does it make as much HP throughput as I can on Scholar as well as the Bears? No. So my Scholar definitely is a lot more comfortable than my Nocturnal Ast. In fact, recently I've been going back in Cedar Sacrifice helping my boyfriend name it get all of his mounts, and the paddling I got when I cracked open Noct Ast for the first time in a few weeks. It was funny. But 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 I I digress. For me though, like focusing purely on Endwalker Endwalker ass. Oh, my magic container's making a a comeback. I I just in the camera. I can't help myself. Sorry. This is like all new to me, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, but um, for me, I don't really like the RNG factor of Astrodyne. I enjoy buff management. I like buffing my allies because I brought it up in past videos of mine. The number one factor to if you're going to clear a raid or not is not going to be how good any particular member is. It's likely going to be the group's morale. Because remember, if like some people aren't really doing that good, they're not really that excited, they might be a little sloppy, they might be a little tired that night, mistakes happen, snafu, one little snafu turns into a few more snafus. Oh great, now everyone's wiped. Especially if you think about something like Life's Rampant. Oh wait, they moved it a little bit too late for the chain and now they cleave that and then boom, 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 and then wipe. The, the chain breaking noise will always be in my mind. I do not like that noise. Now, 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 Macrocosmos, because I've already talked about Astrodyne. I'm not thrilled about the RNG factor of that. I think that Maybe I should go into more detail about that. Maybe I should just do an ass video because I'm getting way too long in the ass. Um, Macrocosmos, I think it's going to be amazing. Uh, the off GCD kit of the ass for healing has always been amazing. It, like I just talked about it in like the White Mage and Ass video. It's going to still remain quite, quite, quite amazing to say the absolute least. So there are there i i should say there are great things like ex exaltation is also great uh you get the damage mitigation that's only 10 percent. only 10 percent. that's going to be amazing uh but you do get that burst of healing after which i do have to say is very nice for picking people up um neutral set <laughs> um neutral set i've said it a million times before and i'm just gonna say it still it is so freaking strong and it's going to dead marker so rejoice but then we get more rng with lady of crowns and lord of crowns and then you get that with astrodyne and the seals and that you only get one shuffle of it oh yeah you don't even okay this was actually one of my issues i was just like why did i put this a little bit lower um the real question is if you have like three seals of different types and then you need to draw a new card and but like it's a different seal and it'll junk up your current three seals that you have what exactly are you doing with that card like is that card like you don't really have a way to like turn it into something so i would almost i'd like to see a way to play a card because you're not gonna undraw it that would be like the worst thing but maybe just replace undraw with like an ability to just do a card without a seal i don't know am i losing my mind does that sound too crazy i hope not I think that that would go a long way to helping that concern of mine, but basically I need to see the ast, I need to play the ast to actually know what I'm going to be actually thinking about it, but right now is it on even my top 5 level? No. I think that it is like closer to like the 10s. Um, no amount of media tour footage, I should say, no amount of media tour footage, no amount of skill list, no amount of me sitting down and analyzing is going to help me feel like I know how I feel about it until I actually play it. I'm not going to know how I feel about it until I know how I feel about it. I know, I know. So I should say that makes it so that the ast is going in B. Not that that's bad, but it is B for bad. B for like... I will be with this job later. It's Sage. 
Did anyone put it less than S? <laughs> it's Scholar with a lot of quality of life improvements and Phlegma, that name, also does add a new little bit of fun. It's not much, it's not much, but with the Scholar I felt like it just, I, like I would have taken almost anything. Is that horrible to say? So Phlegma am I like in despair about? No, that's fine. Plus it has damage converted to healing, converted to healing. It's really just uh, an EOS that you can control, but a more punishing one, because if you're not actually DPSing, well, you're gonna get kind of screwed. But really, technically, it is not more special than the fairy. I don't, I think that a lot of people are like, damage to healing, oh my god, it's the apocalypse. Truly, Sage is going to break everything. No. No. <laughs> Especially not with the pet potencies being a little adjusted in Endwalker and like Eos and Celine, they are definitely going to be carrying some nice weight. They already do, they already do. I've uh, shared the number of analysis often, but it's just like embraces like fourth, third or fourth highest like HPS for scholars in like high end gameplay. So I would not sleep on that. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, the point is Sage, I love it. I really don't really have anything that I haven't said like a thousand times on this channel. I'm currently expecting it to be my first or second job. As you can tell from what I said with Skull, it's going to be one of those first. The other one's going to be shortly after. I'm thinking it might actually be the Sage winning out. But um, yeah, this is going to be a blast. I'm very much excited for this. Now we're getting into melee DPS and I am going to be a little bit like I have a few points right here on my screen so if you see my eyes mostly there that's because I'm like trying to make sure that I like cover things properly enough and I should preface with saying that I am not like the biggest melee fan I like it I enjoy it I dabble in it but it is not the role that I would call myself the most comfortable in I'd say that it is um probably the number one role that I need to really sit down and actually like start to try and master it's it's my weakest by far I, I will just admit that outright so definitely do take that uh, bias with a with, when you hear the rest so and I should say there are points where I really really enjoyed it like um but yeah anyhow I, I've already went up for that enough and so first up is Dragoon and I'm gonna be putting out a D I'm, I went through the media tour changes, guys. I used to play a lot of Dragoon, actually, a lot of it. I wrote an ultimate guide on it. I hit fatigue, honestly, with the class. Um, I can do Dragoon. I can get what to do. I can explain, like, exactly what you want to do in depth and optimize, but I just don't enjoy playing it. So, yeah, it's in D. Monk is a big 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 no for me even with the rework it is unfortunately something that i for me for my tier list which is very different from other people because a lot of people are very very excited for it it's going straight into F tier if i said anything else would anyone believe me uh, i like it i have played it i uh, <laughs> it's just not something that was it's not something that I'd really be comfortable with. And so I acknowledge the rework, and I think that it's a great rework, but I am not the person to come to for Monk details. Like, if you see Monk Ultimate Guide, it would be the same as if you saw a Black Mage Ultimate Guide on my channel. It would be like, what? 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 <laughs> How did this get here? Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's unfortunately not my thing. I am very much looking forward to the comments on Ninja because <laughs> what I'm very curious to see how low people put Ninja for me. I am actually putting it up at A. Yeah, how many people saw that? I don't talk nearly enough about my love of the Ninja. I like to go stealth and then hit them from behind. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stupid, I'm sorry. But it's actually even going to be something that I do put before White Mage, which I know is going to shock a lot of people. I enjoy the ninjutsu system. I enjoy the mobility of it. it the trick attack window and the speedy gameplay is extremely thrilling for me to execute that combo correctly. Like, I'm looking at the combo right now. Bam, bam, bam. In Endwalker, it's going to be freaking amazing. That is going to be one of the most rewarding openers to really get down. And the positionals, I should say, positionals are one of my biggest grievances with melee DPS. I just don't enjoy positionals. I can 
try and do them, it's like, oh, you just go between this part of the circle or that part. I can do them, but it's like, I don't want to be bothering with it. It's it, it, it's almost more of a hassle to me than an addition. Sorry. I know people aren't going to like that. <laughs> but that's just my personal take. Um, but, yeah. Um, thankfully, reduced positionals. And, to be honest, like, their endwalker change is nothing short of badass. Like, you're literally getting... <laughs> Yes, I watched Naruto in the past. You're literally getting Chidori and then Gap Closers, and that was something that I really wanted because they had like that one ability that they can like charge out and go around. Um, I pronounce it terribly, so I'm not even going to try. And to be quite honest, I'm thinking I might do a little bit of a spin up here. Screw it. I'm going to put it in S tier actually before Paladin and Gunbreaker. Yeah, I was just talking through that, I'm just like, oh, the odd that gap was, that was one of my biggest qualms, actually, with the ninja. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the ninja. We're putting it in S before Paladin and Gunbreaker. I don't know. Samurai. I think it's an amazing job. I think that it does so many good things, and it is going to be something, unfortunately, that I'm going to be putting in C. It is great for so many people. It is amazing, but for me personally, I'm not the biggest fan. While well, I enjoyed it for a while, after getting in, it, it threw like things like Delirium Regine, um, where I spammed it. I like if you looked at a lot of my footage at that time, like there was a lot of samurai footage going on, and so um, unfortunately, it's going into C. Sorry, guys, it, it just did not click after a little while. It was super fun at first, but unfortunately it kind of hit the Dragoon uh, kind of like burnout for me too. Now this gets into Reaper. I think that after my ninja that people are starting to have an idea that Reaper would be a little higher. Um, see, baseline I would start it at A tier because like it is delivering a ton of fun a lot of its combos looks very similar to the machinist style of gameplay it's just like you reduce your normal GCD to 1.5 seconds then you're going to be weaving in Goss Round or Ricochet which is going to be those other abilities I think that it's going to actually be amazing going through the kit going through the rotation in depth yeah I realize it's different than the machinist but similar enough that I'm getting that vibe but uh, it's just like, it's like the summoner for me, and just like going through the different summoner life cycles, uh, and like Paladin, where it goes through like its magic life cycle to like its physical life cycle. I'm just a really big fan of that. I, I think that um, the Reaper is just going to work a lot for me, like a lot, a lot, and yeah, so I'm putting it at S tier even before the Ninja. I'm actually a really big fan of it. Plus, I got the Stormblood <laughs> Eureka armor for it, which, to say the least, is amazing. And I told you guys I was playing a lot of Dragon, so I have had that armor set literally for years and years at this point. Um, plus, no positionals outside of Gallows and Gibbet. Um, that works for me. <laughs> I just love it. I, I'm sorry guys. I'm sorry guys. I know a lot of people are wanting me to be like physician enthusiasts and I'm like, no, not me. We're talking about the ranged physical DPS, which I have been playing a lot of this expansion and I'm torn on it. See, I'm in the position where I am hitting fatigue with some of them. Like I played some of them into the ground and back, but I do enjoy their gameplay style quite a lot. I find it very fun. I find the mobility fun. I find just being able to buff allies really fun and just taking those mechanics is really, really rewarding for me. So when I think about it in Endwalker, it's going to be a little tough. So let's talk Bard first, because this is going to be super easy for me. I enjoy it a lot, I love it, and it's actually very stimulating to play. I cannot say that about all jobs, all jobs, all jobs in Final Fantasy XIV, unfortunately, but Bard, I can definitely say, is very stimulating to play. There are just so many things honestly going off at once, and so much to keep track of. I enjoy it thoroughly, and also the utility, while it is niche utility, um, I'm satisfied with it for the most part. I, I know that's niche, but like, would I trade in the healing amp for like 15% damage mitigation palisade from Stormblood? Maybe? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I have written in a note here, yes in a heartbeat I'd probably do it, but I'm like, 
I need to see what the healing requirements are in Endwalker because that might actually completely change things and plus there is so much healing going even from tanks that it's like that might actually be way stronger. We'll have to see. But um, other things like changes to Bloodletter which allows stacking charges is going to be extremely huge for the Bard. I cannot emphasize that's going to be huge. Um, also the Capstone ability is going to be Radiant Finale and I don't care if I'm stupid and people hate on me for it. I actually love this ability and I know a lot of people are just like, I don't get it. Why would you add another thing to the Bard? You know what? I love it. That, that's one of the reasons why I like to play ranged DPS is just to give me that buff fantasy, that cheerleader fantasy. And for me, I wanted more utility as the Bard, I wanted to bring more party buffs, raise morale more, and you gave me more buffs in Endwalker, so I'm really happy. Battle voice cooldown also is lowered to every two minutes, which, um, this is really fulfilling my buff off fantasy, and so, um, I played so much Bard, uh, but these changes... And how good like it looks like to me i it's an easy s tier for me i'm very very happy this is going to be extremely fun Ooh, now machinist uh machinist see guys i am machinist over the past few years has really become comfort food to me it is something that i am incredibly incredibly happy with i am incredibly comfortable with i can do almost anything on it and feel comfortable i i don't even think about the rotation at this point that much uh it's kind of how to say it. it's like that one nice comfortable pair of shoes that you have that yeah is it shiny and new no it's not it's um the kind of broken in and oh but um it's something that you just wear when you want to just kick back and relax it's like it doesn't need to be that serious and that's machinist for me um so for me i love the machinist dearly and i'm in the odd sense glad that it is largely the same i know that that's going to be met with a little bit of um unhappiness because a lot of people seem to want like a huge machinist rework in some of my comments but i i think we got like some nice things like crowned collider that i'm looking at even though literally quite literally it is a fancier flashier version of like pile bunker it's just like okay we'll do the pile bunker and then we're gonna do like this crown collider after and i'm like that's gonna be neat uh, we also get the chainsaw, which is going to give a 20% more battery, and what do I think about that? Guess what I think about that? I think more summoning our big Omnic Butler is going to be absolutely amazing, and yeah, absolutely, I'm going to quote Ash. Bob, do something. Go and do it, Wax, with a matcha container, because I'm on camera and I'm still not used to it. Darn it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Even more battery for 60 second intervals, you line it up, you wait for your reassemble, you do your drill, that lines you up with the raid buff window, you get more bob time out there. You probably actually want to precast bob just because of that delay. Um, also, machine sniper is coming up um, real soon, I already wrote it for um, Shadowverse, but I never did actually get it out, which is a shame. Um, but, um, Pretty much, it's very much the same machinist, and that's why it is getting a S tier right behind Bard. It's, I know they're like neck and neck, and but I'm thinking like Bard is what I'm going to level up before machinist. Machinist is immaculate. Machinist is perfect. Machinist is beautiful. Machinist is a model. Machinist could walk out on the battlefield in a diaper, and everyone would be like, "Oh my God, Cole, are you making another Drag Race reference?" And I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> I'm stupid. But one thing I will say is, why on earth reassemble at two charges? Like, uh, of all the changes, or how to say it, all this changes is like the immediate opener, and maybe if there is a super long phase transition, like E1S, that phase transition with that cutscene that's like blowing like the rainbows into like the planet and all that. Um, actually that's not even long enough because... Maybe? Maybe. Maybe. We'll see, but it, outside of the opener, in general gameplay, it's not going to change anything because you're still lining up with that 60 second raid buff limit with the three drills. So, well, how that works is one drill, 20 seconds, second drill, four seconds, third drill, 60 seconds, and everyone's going to be like, why are you bloating this video with machinist facts? I'm sorry. I guess then I'm going to pair it with Chainsaw. <laughs> Dancer. You know when I introduced range DPS that this would be the one. <laughs> First things first is Dancer is great. It is amazing. It will still be strong. It is currently bonkers. It has always been very strong. Um, but with the Endwalker changes, I'm going to be honest, I don't think that they gave me what I personally really wanted. I wanted more buffs. I wanted to really play into that party utility aspect. I like the heal over time. I would think improvisation, applying that hot over time is going to be amazing. 
so then I look at Reapers and then I'm just like, wow. Like, Arcane Crest looks so much better because it's on 30 second cooldown timer. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> but, um, Starfall Dance being the capstone ability makes me a little bit bummed out. Um, so, I, I just expected a bit more utility. It's not being given to me. And so for Dancer, I'm fatigued a bit. I played so much of it. Um, but it's not like the same rewarding come for food as Missionist for me. So I'm unfortunately going to be putting it down at C. I'm just really kind of tired and I don't really love these changes. I'm looking at the tier list right now. In fact, I'm going to put it at D. Um, D for don't make me play this. Um, like, I'm going to play it before I think I would play like a Dark Knight or a Warrior. The last thing that I wanted on my buff bot was more burst damage. Like, when I play the Dancer, I have a very specific goal in mind, and I don't think that that aligns. Not that, it, not that that matters. Like, the developer should develop to make people really play, like, what they want and be generally appealing. But, like, this being the first one tier list... That's not what I wanted. Uh, in my mind, with what I've seen with the Bard, the Dancer isn't the premier buffing class anymore. Um, Bard is <laughs> kind of what a world we live in with. Casters. First up, Black Mage. No, 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 no. And I know some people over Discord have heard my dying shrieks of horror on Black Mage. No, I understand the rotation perfectly, like, I get it, but in content with any difficulty, I'm talking about, like, even dodging orange markers and, like, some basic content, like, just leave your day, I become a sputtering cast-canceled mess, and while I understand the theory and spent hours and hours practicing it, it just doesn't click, so it's gonna be in F for... not... for me? Now, Red Mage. And see, Red Mage, I am actually impressed with the changes. Um, Magic Berry is going to be an insanely powerful utility. Uh, like, insanely strong. I think that a lot of people are sleeping on it. That is going to be very, very, very good. Um, now, the rotation being 50 mana rather than 80 mana means that you're going to get more melee time. And really, that's one thing with the Red Mage that I was kind of missing was it's just like, it feels like you're mostly a caster that once in a while will go in and do a melee combo. And that's going to feel a lot better, in my opinion. Of opinion uh, but so I'm a big fan of this and manification being a 50 burst big fan embolden um, impacting magic DPS Boop. big big that's gonna be such a huge quality of life change um, displacement and engagement are gonna be on two charges and then a separate two charges on corpse a corpse um, this is gonna make the red mage very mobile which is very 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 appealing um, 420 policy of damage on flesh flash in my big fan. Um, and I'm joking. <laughs> but, uh, like, I think that the Red Mage actually, of all jobs, was actually a solid winner this expansion. It wasn't major changes, I get it, but oh boy, the changes that did happen, those are going to be felt. Those are going to actually be, um, pretty amazing, if I'm actually quite honest. Um, but this gets to the question of where do I see on the tier list this going? And do I see myself enjoying it? I'm putting it an A behind White Mage. I think that that is when I'll get to it in terms of leveling. Red Mage can be enjoyable, very incredibly enjoyable, but history has shown to me that I avoided it unless I was progging or doing things like Eureka, for instance. Then I would play it, but generally speaking, I'd go Summoner instead. Summoner. Obviously S tier. <laughs> <laughs> How could it be anything but with me? <laughs> uh, it's gonna be right up there with Scholar, and I thought the same as everyone else with the summoner when I saw it. It was like, ooh, flashy, pretty, oh my god, every grew to 10. Um, big, cool looking, ooh my eye. Um, but then I got to the toolkit, I, and that's what I really want to see. What is it? It's like aesthetics. Those can be as nice as you want. Is that gonna be fun? And I got to the red me I mean, summoner to the actual toolkit, and it delivers everything that I really like. It delivers mobility, utility, self-preservation, life cycles, changing phases of gameplay. All of that healing will also be absolutely noticed and great for healers, and definitely take off a ton of pressure. It's not like red mage's magic barrier, but every like 
time that you have Phoenix out, it's going to be like taking out a ton of healing and pretty beefy heals at that. Like this isn't a true amount of healing, so I will 100% uh, take it. Overall, I am stunningly impressed with the summoner. Um, the rework is saying that it was a success and amazing in understatement. I think it might. But so the conclusion of the video. <laughs> This leaves us at the kind of overall picture, and I think more than anything, what really stands out to me is in Final Fantasy XIV, there is notably more classes than I, that I'm really happy with that I'm seeing myself really actively wanting to play than not, and I am insanely picky with what I want to play. Um, and so I kind of feel like this expansion, I'm going to truly have a very wide variety to play, which makes me very excited. Um, I'm how to say it i'm not worried about balance if people are just like are you worried about the balance like are these things on the lower like gonna be bad no 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 because the devs also make things balance but more than that like some of these are really amazing it's just like warrior and dark knight they're gonna be amazing um undeniably but it's just like me in terms of like what i'm gonna play i'm just even looking even at just s and s plus tier and i have nine jobs in that that is insanely Insanely good variety. Sage, Scholar, Summoner, Machinist, Bard, Reaper, Ninja, Paladin, Gunbreaker. They are all extremely exciting to me and that is actually kind of a blessing because I have been in past games where I'm just like, I don't even see a single job I want to play. We don't talk about those games here. Um, but I look at this tier list and it's just like, it's so Freaking good. I'm absolutely pleased going into Endwalker to say the absolute least. Anyhow, that really brings us to the end of the video. So now that you've reached the end of the video, was your comment accurate? Is it going to be accurate? Are you going to maybe post a second comment with, oh, like, this was where I was wrong? Um, <laughs> if you played along with the game and guess what I'd write, I'm actually, like, really curious. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be snooping that comment section and seeing. <laughs> I'm kind of worried and scared. Someone's gonna definitely put Scholar as like F tier and I'm gonna be like, what? No! But anyhow, that really does it for this video and I am so sorry to make you go through my camera experiment. This is definitely different for me. But um, yeah, take care everyone and I hope that you had a fantastic day. Is this where I'm supposed to meow? Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> I'm stupid, I'm sorry, I've told you that all along. Meow. <laughs>